You've seen it used in TV crime shows, the technology which matches a bullet to the gun that fired it. Well, tonight in our exclusive CBC News investigation, we get an in-depth look at that technology created right here in Canada and now used around the world. It is a place the public never gets to see. After weeks of negotiating, we have obtained exclusive access to take you inside Toronto's ballistics lab. You're about to get a rare look at bullet science. John Lancaster joins us live in studio tonight with your exclusive tour. One gun can have many stories. That's what police investigating the murder of Bailey Zaveda discovered. She was killed by a stray bullet in a Leslieville bar. Months later, police discovered what they thought was a suspected murder weapon. What this Canadian technology revealed was a sinister tale of that gun. It had been used in two other violent crimes as well. All of this helped make the court case bulletproof. Every gun has a story. A secret, a signature as unique as DNA. Unraveling those mysteries was once unheard of. But now, technology is helping solve gun crimes in the streets of Toronto, including the multiple shooting at this Leslieville bar that left five bystanders wounded and a 23-year-old university student dead. Crimes, this guns and gangs investigator says, may have gone unsolved just a few years back. Free IBIS, I'm not too sure how they would even link anything up that way. It's called IBIS, or the Integrated Ballistics Identification System, Canadian technology that's pulling back the curtain on gun crime. It happens here inside the High Security Center of Forensic Sciences in Toronto. You want to take a look at this gun for sure. me, please? It's up to scientists like Robin Thomas to unlock the secrets. This is a crime scene gun, but what kind of gun is it? This is a Ruger. The model is a P95 and it's a 9mm Luger and it's a semi-automatic handgun. She shows us how in this rare behind the scenes look. So even if they made a million of these, each one's unique? Each one is unique. So if we look at two, two guns that were manufactured right after one another on the same machine on everything, we can look at the bullets fired from each and there's differences between the two. To identify those differences, the gun is test fired again. And again, essentially making it talk. Here's how it works. When the trigger is pulled, the firing pin strikes the primer, setting off an explosion that sends the bullet spiraling down the barrel. The bullet casing slams back hard against the metal breech face. The ejector spits it out. The process leaves unique markings in the bullet and casing. The bullet or casing is scanned by IBIS. In just minutes, it provides these three-dimensional images of every mark, striation, or groove on the object. It's compared to the thousands of other crime scene bullets and casings in the IBIS database. That's exactly what happened with the bar shooting. The more you put into it, the more information you're going to be able to get out. And what they got was a game changer. Weeks after the bar shooting, police seized this gun in what they thought was an unrelated robbery case. Due to IBIS and the technology, we were able to find out that not only was it involved in that robbery, it was involved in the homicide here, and it was also involved in a shooting out in the West End. One gun, multiple crimes. Eventually, the killer was jailed for life. IBIS has since helped link 2,000 more gun crimes in Toronto alone. Back in the lab, it's happening again. So the bullet on this side here is the test fire bullet that we just shot and we've taken out of the water tank. And on the other side, this is a bullet that IBIS has told us is a possible hit. IBIS has helped her match her test fire to a bullet found at a crime scene months earlier. What does that tell us? That tells us that this bullet from the crime scene was actually fired in the gun that we just shot. That's a match? It's a match. And another secret revealed. Now, as an old crime reporter, find this stuff fascinating, John. <laughs> you discovered a term while doing this investigation called policing the brass. Tell us what it means and why it's important. Sure. Well, first of all, Dwight, uh, we, we all know that those bullet casings are made of brass. And that expression we were talking about today, well, that's used in part by gangsters and criminals in the underworld. Essentially, it means collecting your brass. The criminals, through various court cases, know the power of IBIS. And in some cases, police say increasingly, in fact, they arrive at these crime scenes, they'll find a victim on the ground, but no shell casings. In fact, they have evidence now to suggest that criminals, whenever they can, that is, actually police their brass. They pick up those shell casings because the last thing they want is those bullet casings and bullet fragments going into IBIS. 
Fascinating. Okay. Thanks so much, John.